Am I good to go? Yeah, good, good to go. to go, Laura. Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Wright, and today I will be presenting the Educational Equity Watch, a high impact project combining web data and design skills. So I'm just going to go over a little overview of what we're going to be going over during our presentation. First, we're going to be talking about the mission of the Educational Equity Watch. Then we're going to be talking about the issues that the Educational Equity Watch is addressing. Then we're going to go into an overview of what is on the website. Then I'm going to be talking about SUNY Open Lab and how that helped me create a mock website that later helped me migrate the site to its independent website. And then I'm going to be talking about creating a story map process and what that process was like. Then I'm going to be talking about the migration process and how I use collaboration to really create this website and this project. So the mission of the Educational Equity Watch is that the Educational Equity Watch aims to spread awareness about racialized educational inequities within the United States education system and to make the information more um, accessible to the general public. And having this platform on a website, we hope that it makes it more digestible to understand racialized educational inequities and lets the average person analyze data um, about the problem that's going on within the education system and see that it's a problem that needs to be addressed. So the issues that we are trying to address within the Educational Equity Watch is that there are patterns of segregation within the United States education system and that we often see black and brown students um, at the short end of the stick because of that. Um, we see that our schools are divided where we see that there are schools with predominantly black and brown students and schools that are predominantly white. And the schools that, at least from our research, the schools that were predominantly black and brown tend to have less educational attainments than schools that were predominantly white. And we think that this is an imperative study to um, spread awareness about just because of the fact that even within higher education, we see that our black and brown students are at a lower enrollment and that we really do, and that looking at the education system can maybe really get to the core of why this is an issue and that um, maybe um, decrease some of these um, racialized educational inequities that exist within the education system. So now I'm gonna go over an overview of what is on the website. First over here, there is the cover of the website where there is a literature review, and it pretty much just shows the research that I've done about um, racialized educational inequities. And it talks about a little bit of the history of how we became to, to have a racialized educational system. And then we have our unsilenced interview section, pretty much where it, it has um, an interview in, in documentary form of SUNY Geneseo students who went to predominantly black and brown schools and who went to predominantly white schools. And, um, and they are black and brown students and they are, will be discussing what their experience was like within their K through 12 education system and how did that impact their transition to college. Next, we have our mapping educational inequalities where it displayed um, a select schools within one specific region um, with different demographics and then highlights their educational attainments within um, each school. So you can see that even though um, there are schools within the same area, um, the different demographics does make a difference between educational attainments. And then we have our NYSED data section where it has all schools within New York State and it has um, each school is breaking up by demographic. So the way we um, sectioned that out was that schools that were less than 50 percent were categorized as predominantly um, white. Schools that were 50 percent through 79 percent were categorized as integrated and schools that were more than 50 percent are categorized as predominantly black and brown. And for each school, you were able to see the educational attainment in each school. And then next we have our WordPress section where um, pretty much I wasn't able, I wouldn't have been able to create this website without the installment of WordPress um, and OpenLab using SUNY Create. Um, OpenLab allowed me to create a mock website of the initial website that I wanted to create. And just be, by being able to do this, I was able to migrate it into its own independent website. And then, um, I was able to learn a lot of skills using WordPress just by having this open lab resource. Um, I was able to learn how to create pages, how to embed um, YouTube videos and story maps, and how to create menus and image headers. So next I'm gonna be passing the presentation off to Dr. Prestiza where he will talk about the nice set data. Thank you, Laura. So um, my, my part of this project was to help with pulling together um, some of the outcome data that Laura referenced. 
uh, so that we could actually quantify um, some of those disparities between predominantly black and Hispanic schools um, and, and those that are predominantly white. And so I began by obtaining data from uh, the New York State Education Department uh, data site. It's a really nice um, resource, um, having a, a variety of, of, of different um, uh, sources of information, including graduation rates. So I started by downloading the graduation rate data. Um, Laura expressed a desire to create the, the story map at an early stage. So we knew that we needed geographic information um, as well. So we needed the latitude and longitude uh, for each of the, the, the school districts. Um, the trick was, and I and I shared with Laura, this is one of the greatest data challenges I've had. I'm the interim director of institutional research at Geneseo, um, is that the geographical data um, had the National Center for Education Statistics uh, code, and the New York State has its own code. So I needed a third file from the NCES site that has both codes, um, sort of a crosswalk to connect the NYSED outcomes data with the geographical information, um, applied some manipulation uh, with using R and R Studio um, to create the factors that went into uh, that NYSED dashboard. Um, so there are just a few screenshots there to give you a, a little bit of an idea of, of what happened there. Um, and now it's back to Laura or Dr. Shack. Yeah. So next okay. I'll be um, passing it off to Dr. Shack, where he'll be talking about the educational inequality maps and his process of helping me create that. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. So as both Laura and Matt mentioned, one of the things Laura wanted to do was to create an interactive map that would enable people either to uh, take a tour of school districts across the state and see for each location um, uh, what the data show um, for schools that are predominantly white, predominantly BIPOC or integrated, um, or to enable them to just kind of scroll around on the map and pick a location and see the information and, and, and go from place to place on their own. Um, so we decided to use a tool called um, Story Map JS, which is um, provided uh, for free by Night Lab. Um, but the uh, the challenge we ran into was that um, the way Story Map works is you go to their website, um, you you open up windows to enter data for each location you want to have on your map. It's kind of a tedious process if you have a lot of locations that you want to put on a map and a lot of uh, information that you want to associate with them. And that's exactly what we had in the data that Matt came up with. Um, fortunately, um, Story Lab provides, um, they've got a, a page of advanced instructions that you can use um, so that instead of having your map hosted on their server and created the way I described, uh, you can host it yourself and you can just feed it the data and it will produce the map and then you can embed that on a, on a WordPress site. So um, Laura took Matt's data for uh, selection of schools, a representative selection of schools. It didn't make sense to have them all in here. Um, map would have been too crowded. And she uh, put them into a Google Sheet um, with the latitude and longitude information and the, the, the other information about the schools, found images to represent the different schools that were um, free and open on the web, many of them from, from uh, Wikipedia. And uh, I took that Google Sheet, ran it through a Python script to convert it to JSON data, which is what um, StoryMap wants. And um, we just put that on GitHub, put the map there, and then um, Laura embedded the map on a WordPress page. And I put the link to Laura's site in the chat earlier. So you see a static image here, but you can go to the site and you can uh, navigate that map for yourself to see how it works. Thank you, Dr. Schacht. So now I'll be talking about that process of me trying to find images to put on the website itself. As Dr. Schacht has mentioned, he did create the story map template with um, the JSON um, report. And um, while I had to try to find the images, I went to Wiki Commons and I would select the desired image that I specifically wanted for each um, school. 
And then um, I would have to go into the specific details of the images and find the file URL and the attribution, but specifically in HTML form, and then embed that into the um, Google Sheets that Dr. Schacht created by just copying and pasting it into the Google Sheets, um, then where he was able to put it into the story map. So the migration process of the website. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that I was able to move the website from SUNY Open Lab to um, my own independent website just because I wanted to have access to it after I graduated. So in that process, we initially wanted to move it from SUNY Open Lab to um, a what to a database called MAMP um, that allowed the website to be on my computer within itself. Um, however, that did cause a little bit of issues in the process while we were trying to do that. Um, so we figured out that it would just be easier to create a WordPress um, website overall and redo that process and then move that from um, WordPress to its own independent site. And although it was a little bit discouraging at the time, um, it in hindsight, I realized how much I learned through that process um, of create of moving the website and like going through those little hiccups. Um, I got to learn about cPanel or using the terminal window or using um, PHP my admin and um, just because we went through those hiccups. So I feel like um, those hiccups were really, really useful throughout this entire process. So this is just the website QR code and the link associated to the website. But while you guys are looking at this, I do want to talk about the collaboration process with Dr. Pestizo, Dr. Simmons, and Dr. Schacht, and also Mr. Johnson that really helped me create the website um, throughout City Geneseo. Um, so I'm an ambassadorship. That's how I really got the funding for this website. And then um, I talked to Dr. Pestizo and Dr. Schacht about um, my website and my intentions of what I wanted to do with the website. And they and I was met with nothing but but um, to be honest, like pleasure and like real, real enthusiasm about creating this website. And I feel like without the collaboration with on the SUNY Geneseo campus, I would not have been able to create this website because um, I was able to get so many different professors with different expertise to be able to help me with the different skills <clears throat> that I developed throughout this process. So um, now we are in our question section. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And I, I'd like to um, just take a moment to share that my my Laura is very generous and and giving you know us some some credit. My experience has been that uh, Laura's had an incredible vision at every step of the way, and um, it's it's truly been a pleasure uh, to to be able to collaborate and be along for the ride and uh, be able to lend some of our expertise here and there. Um, but but really, this has been Laura's project through and through. Yeah, thank you so much. Laura, I, I wonder if um, you could talk a little bit uh, maybe about the student ambassador program at Geneseo that um, enabled you to to have the the time space and and give uh, provide you with some financial support for undertaking what's really a a, a big project. Yeah. Um, so the CUNY Ambassadorship Award was pretty much um, a research project award, and you had to pretty much create a project for change. Um, and before, when you create the project for change, you had to submit a proposal of the entire project that you wanted to, to do and the professors that you wanted to work with. And my personal experience with it, when I initially wanted to do the ambassadorship, I wasn't ready with, like, my relationship with my professors. Um. So I ended up taking a year off to work on my proposal and build those relationships with Dr. Pestizo, Dr. Schacht, and Dr. Simmons. Um, and then I applied for the ambassadorship again, and then I was um, presented $5,000 to be able to create get camera equipment to make the um, interviews for the website, and then also different like um, equipments that was necessary for the website to exist. Thank you so much. Where where do you where do you see you, since you um you talked about the migration process mm -hmm. and the fact that um you you first developed the site on um, Geneseo's installation of Open Lab, which as you pointed out is is it that's using an infrastructure that SUNY provides called SUNY Create, um, but you and and so you know that. That gave you tools to start to do what you want to do, but you, 
um, I think wisely, didn't want it to just stay there because um, you, you want to ensure that it's a sustainable project, that people will continue to have access to it. And also, I'm assuming um, you wanted to have it in a place where you could continue to develop it, right? So that was that was a big part of the reason for your registering your own domain name, paying for external hosting, and the <laughs> the fun time that we had um, migrating the site from Open Lab into your freestanding educationalequitywatch.net website. Yeah. So um, what, what are some of the things you plan to do going forward with the site? Yeah, so um, I actually, I'm going to grad school next year. Um, I'm going to be getting my PhD in political science. So, and what I want to study is how does local politics impact the education system? So I plan to like continue the site as I continue my own research and seeing how that, how the education system is being impacted um, and how different students of color are being impacted because of that. Um, I also plan to hopefully like make the website more expansive and outside of New York State. Um, since I'm going to be, I'm going to be um, at Vanderbilt University in Tennessee. So I, maybe I could um, do some more research down there to see how maybe that is impacted by the South. Is the South the same as New York State? Um, and really expand it at, on that, at that platform. There's there's an interesting and related yes. question in the chat yeah. um, about any plans to share this with those in a position to influence K-12 uh, in, in, in New York. So I wonder how you might bring this site to the attention of, of, of those who have that political influence. Um, yeah, I definitely want to do that. I don't necessarily have like an exact plan of how I'm going to do that yet, but definitely I would like to share it to my professors um, within my next institution. And like I, I shared the website with my professors here and they're also like people within political science. Um, yeah, so that's my plan with that. Um, I, I just want to point out also that, that the, the person who asked that question and then followed it up with, wow, you have a dissertation topic already, knows what he's talking about because he's a political scientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well i'm just i'm just really jealous i mean i you know when i got to graduate school i had no idea what i wanted to study so that's not totally true but um i went to theory so this is much better um uh you know and i was thinking the chancellor would be great for him to see this considering you know he probably still has friends in the education department right when he was commissioner so yeah we should, we should get this in his hands yeah for sure this would be great yeah, and I, I love this comment from someone who joined late, so didn't catch the beginning and says, um, I had no idea you were an undergrad. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Very polished presentation. Thank you. Agreed. We're very proud of you, Laura. Yep. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I'm very proud. I'm very happy to share this information with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to say anything at all about the um, the, the video work? You mentioned using yeah. some of the funds to get cameras. Um, so you have some additional videos that will be added at some point. Yeah, so um, hopefully by next week, uh, my official videos will be up. But pretty much the ambassadorship allowed me like $5,000 to buy equipment for the website. So I used a lot of that on like camera equipment to pretty much create like my own studio um, to do interviews with students on the Geneseo campus. Um, so I did the interviews with um, the students on the Geneseo campus, and I'm working with Mr. Johnson, who is somebody um, pretty much in like the photography section of SUNY Geneseo and like video section of SUNY Geneseo. Um, and he's teaching me how to use Final Cut Pro. So I've been like editing my videos and like even using Final Cut Pro to make a documentary. So yeah, hopefully that'll be up there by next week so you guys can look at it. That's and fabulous. those are firsthand accounts from from BIPOC students at Geneseo in terms of what they experienced yes. and advice that they have, et cetera. Yeah. 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 One of the things I love about what you've what you've done is that um almost a, you know, you've got a you've got a landing page for your website that explains what it's designed to do. But after that, everything is is um, gives the user a ton of choice about how they want to explore the information. It's such a great example of 
what the web can do yeah. well. You know, this could just be a report, right? With graphs and tables in it. Um, but instead, someone can explore this map in a variety of different ways. They can use that dashboard to sort and filter data. And um, Laura, even late in the process, asked, hey, on the map page, is it possible to display the data for just those schools as opposed to the NYSED nice dashboard on the site, which has schools from across the state so that you know there's a ton of information there what about just enabling people to sort the data that is for the schools that are on the map and so you know we spent some time figuring out how we could do that matt was able to just extract those schools laura and i were able to to um build a wordpress table that's got that sorting functionality to it. So um, even just on that one page, users have multiple ways to explore the information that you've uncovered. It's great. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I'm super excited about that section. We recently, I think we did that this week. So yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how um, related to that, to, to build on that, how Laura's project has taken publicly available data at NYSED, which which anyone can go in and download um, a CSV with thousands, tens of thousands of rows um, and and distills it and packages it, presents it in, in an organized way that that supports the message and the mission um, and just sort of increases data accessibility. So we have so much data in our world today. And I think it's really important for us to find ways to use technology as, as Laura has um, to, to tell the story. And 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 to have data at the same time, so it goes beyond, you know, speculation or opinions. It's it's factual, um, but in a very accessible way. So yeah, yeah definitely yeah. Love how it has that qualitative and quantitative aspects to it both, where like somebody can watch and hear about the students' experiences, but then see that the data backs up their experiences as well. Yeah, I think yeah for for uh, across higher ed. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, thinking most immediately, of course, about our uh, institution, SUNY Geneseo. Um, an interesting and important challenge is how we're how we can scale up the opportunity for students to develop the skills that you develop doing this project, yeah. Laura, because yeah. you know th this as as Matt's suggesting, um, these are these are skills really that every student should leave an undergraduate education possessing, knowing what pu public data is out there, being able to access it. Um, and by the way, not necessarily always being able to do all kinds of things with it themselves, but knowing who they can go to at their institution who can be a collaborator with them. I really appreciate the, the portion at the end of your presentation where where you talked about um, the power and the value of collaboration for you in in doing this, I think it's so true for for anybody who wants to undertake a big project. Why should they be doing it on on their own? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. agree. I, I love that part. I love that there were points where you could go to Dr. Simmons in our School of Education for some of the critical background, um, particularly within education. Um, that you could go to Dr. Schacht with uh, the website, you know, technical aspects, and it allowed me to focus more on the data part. I felt like we could each really, you know, use our our own areas, and and you pulled it together. So the, you 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 created the team, you had the vision and the mission. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I think we all right. All right. So thank you Great. so much for listening to my presentation. I appreciate you guys all for coming out and hearing about my website. Thank you, Laura.